من المهاجرين غير النظاميين من أفريقيا جنوب الصحراء إلى تونس. Large numbers of illegal migrants from sub-Saharan Africa. ما تؤدي إليه من عنف وجرائم وممارسات غير Violence, crime, unacceptable practices. هدف غير المعلن منها. Turning Tunisia into just another African country, divorced from its Arab and Islamic roots. This loaded language formed part of an official speech to Tunisia's National Security Council, a meeting held two months ago to address the country's apparent migrant crisis. It was racist rhetoric invoking a theory of great replacement, and it was delivered by Tunisia's president, Qais Saied. It was the most shocking statement we'd heard since Qais Saeed took power in his coup d'etat. The words are clear. He talks about conspiracy. He talks about colonization. He talks about crime and violence perpetrated by immigrants from sub-Saharan Africa. He stereotypes these people, saying that they're part of a conspiracy to replace Tunisians. You never expect the head of state to come out and say the things that he said. To use specific terminology to describe the situation and to completely discard the consequences that might occur following that speech. It doesn't look like he took his time to think about his words or what he's saying or the implications. If the president's words sounded like something a spokesperson for Tunisia's far-right nationalist party might say, it's because they were. In the run-up to Sayyid's speech, social media was awash with misinformation and conspiracy theories about the supposed toll migrants from countries like Mali, Ivory Coast and Guinea were taking on Tunisia. Leading that charge, the country's nationalist party, Parti Nationaliste Tunisienne, which posted a detailed study advancing the conspiracy that black immigrants from sub-Saharan Africa were arriving in droves, out to replace the country's Arab-majority population. It was just weeks between the publication of that study and the president's speech. The Tunisian Nationalist Party was campaigning hard about sub-Saharan immigration. Qais Saied took this idea, an idea that wasn't yet in the media, and he put it there. There's been a normalization of anti-immigration discourse, racist discourse. And this theory about a great replacement is now taking hold and it's being debated on radio and TV shows. In this TV exchange, the journalist does the bare minimum to challenge the leader of the Nationalist Party. And suddenly you see that they've given the floor to someone who defends great replacement theory as if it were a legitimate idea. These extremist groups had a platform in which they could voice their racist ideas and xenophobic ideas people who don't have the full picture of what migrants go through in Tunisia. People who just treat it as if it was in like a normal debate, as if we're debating things that don't have actual effects on other people's lives. But they do. Black migrants in Tunisia are facing a massive spike in hate crime. The impact on the approximately 21,000 black African migrants in Tunisia was immediate. Reports of racially charged harassment have multiplied in recent weeks. Since Sayyid's speech and the racist discourse that developed, advocacy and human rights groups have documented a marked increase in cases of migrants being targeted, attacked and arrested by police. The Tunisian authorities never responded to our request for an interview. But following his speech, Sayyid did deliver a joint press conference with the president of Guinea-Bissau, in which he denied the accusations of racism. De quoi il parle? Il divague. Tout d'abord, j'ai un certain nombre de ma famille qui sont mariés à des Africains. 
tous les pays d'Afrique subsaharienne. De... All the countries of sub-Saharan Africa were legitimately asking for an apology, but it wasn't an apology. Ils ont voulu interpréter les, euh, le discours à leur guise pour nuire à la Tunisie. Instead, Saïd accused those who oppose him, critical journalists, those he sees as challenging his ideas, of misunderstanding him. Speaking out against the Saïd government takes guts. In the wake of the president's 2021 power grab, in which he dissolved parliament, decimated the judiciary, and jailed top opposition figures, Journalists have rallied together in solidarity to protest the increasingly repressive media environment. The president came out swinging. And the assault on the media has only intensified, enabled by a controversial new law, Decree 54. Introduced last September, Decree 54's deliberately vague wording punishes journalists who publish, quote, fake news that might harm public safety, national security, or spread terror, and gives authorities license to interpret that at their discretion. It's a threat hanging over journalists nowadays. They risk 10 years in prison, as well as tens of thousands of dinars in fines if they're charged with criticizing those in power, or if they question the information they spread. Decree 54 has created a climate of fear in the media, especially after the arrest of Nouruddin Boutar, the director of Tunisia's privately owned Mosaic FM and it stops reporters from discussing certain subjects or being too critical of the authorities out of fear of being pursued and imprisoned, like so many opposition figures nowadays. They can file complaints against journalists saying that they're spreading rumors and harmful information, and as a result, self-censorship develops. There are media outlets where the space for sub-Saharan immigrants and for black Tunisians is protected, where they can develop their narrative, but this is negligible compared to the weapon of mass broadcasting the president has at his disposal, as well as the legal arsenal that can be used to repress journalists. This culture of fear and repression, the crackdown on both undocumented migrants and the media attempting to tell their story, has transformed Tunisia, a country which prides itself on being the first Muslim nation to abolish slavery, and which in 2011, gave birth to the Arab Spring. As the country's financial crisis worsens and the president's popularity wanes, Saeed seems to be scapegoating black migrants. Before his speech, racism in Tunisia existed but was barely spoken of. Now it's been laid bare. That speech weakened an already very fragile community in Tunisia. It's very damaging because it implicitly says you're not really Tunisian if you're black. You don't fit the mold of what a Tunisian is in the collective imagination. Anti-blackness is deeply rooted in history. It's a history that has never been acknowledged or addressed. So it makes sense that in 2023, we would face such a crisis and we would hear such a narrative. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more media analysis on the US, Taiwan, China, or anywhere across the globe, we have plenty to offer. Just click here.